There he is, Baid Root. He goes for the Kipco Champion Stakes at Ascot in preference to the Arc. William Haggis has explained it in some detail this week, if you've been listening closely. Now's your opportunity, Andrew, to, to tell William whether he was right or wrong. Well, I, I think William's living and breathing the horse every day and he knows what he's doing, so I'm not going to try and uh, dispute his decision. Uh, I'm sure it's the right decision. Um, that's, that's him working this morning. Newmarket. Oh right, okay. Well, not working, but just doing a canter for the brilliant for the Hetzer Henry Cecil Newmarket Open. Oh, rather great. Lovely. Um, no, he's just a fabulous horse, and I yeah, look. It, probably if he stayed in training another year, the art would be top of the top of the list, and you'd have a chance to experiment over a mile and a half. But going straight into the art, never having you know your last run as the first try at a mile and a quarter, it would be a, a leap of faith to that point, which they don't really need to be taking chances with a horse like that. Dave. Uh, it's disappointing that he's not going to go for the arc because that's Europe's middle distance championship and it would tell us more about Baid, just I exactly how great a horse he is. And I think most, if not all racing fans, would, um, would rather see him win the arc as his sire, see the stars did in 2009, than justify very short odds in the Kipco Champion Stakes at Ascot. Um, I think it's understandable. I, I'm not a trainer myself, and I imagine that balancing ambition and conservatism, if you like, or reality, it, it is, a, is, a difficult, it is a difficult balance to strike most of the time with, with horses like that. Yeah, I, I mean, I, th I think in this, if you wanted immortality for the horse, the art probably winning the art could have got him that mm. immortality but uh, he's still going to be a very good horse and a very commercial stallion and they've got to keep an eye on, on that as well. And the one thing that struck me that I was a little bit sad about was it sounds like the fact that the arc was on the table meant that the Irish Champion Stakes came off the table and but for that you might have ended up with him in the Irish Champion Stakes and the Champion Stakes so we were kind of maybe robbed of one more time but Kipco British Champion Stakes it is for Baid at Ascot. The finale of the Racing League took place uh, this week. Now, the Racing League is a concept, Andrew, you've supported pretty wholeheartedly. Is it working? And if it isn't, does it need some fine-tuning to, to get to somewhere where it can really capture people's imagination? Well, I, w when I was first told of the concept and, and sold the idea, as it were, there were talk of the venues being Chester and flat racing back at Aintree and during this sort of summer season and it it sounded very exciting and interesting um that didn't come off so you're talking about you know the the, the venues that, that they've used i think it has a it has a place but it should be in the winter thursday nights you, you know on that it would give a bit of a buzz to that winter program you know it wouldn't be competing with with the jump racing because that obviously finished when it gets dark um and the all-weather racing is already happening and something like the racing league through the month of, of December or January would, would actually give a little spring to our step. Uh, that's interesting. I've had lots of different suggestions. I had an idea where you could strip it all across eight days so you keep an intense, focused interest, a winter idea. But it hasn't quite... It's not, it's not quite getting the, the, the target, is it? I, I, we'll, we'll talk in a few moments about Irish Champions Weekend and we've talked about documentaries that open that that bring new mm. eyeballs new new people into into the sport in that sense i don't think it has you know just uh, one of the stated goals with the revised version this year was was race course uh, attendances just reading doncaster 1632 lingfield 1362 newcastle 991 for were the first three recorded so it clearly hasn't uh, worked in that sense. Um, it, it has created opportunities for uh, to go for big prizes, and it's created bigger fields as well. Whether that's whether, whether that's a creation or whether it's moving the same tiles round the board, so that those that's money that's come from somewhere else. Those are runners that uh, have come from somewhere else. Is a moot point. Okay, let's talk about uh, Sean Levy, who stood down from his rides at Sandown Park last week because he'd. Um, he had not satisfied medical conditions. Now, uh, the Sun initially speculated, and that was followed up by, by the Racing Post and elsewhere, that this was because he had uh, failed a test for, for a prohibited substance. So you can suppose if that were the case, that would either be a, a saliva test 
that the BHA had introduced and they would have to then wait for a sample to confirm that, which is why they're not saying exactly what the situation is, or there is a possibility it could be something that's come from a foreign jurisdiction that the, that the BHA have been inf informed of. Um, Dave, this is the second such case in recent weeks because Marco Ghiani, we were exactly the same situation. Yeah, uh, it, pretty much uh, to the letter. Um, it was uh, Sandown on Wednesday. Sean Levy was uh, due to ride Miss Down Under for Amanda Perrett, uh, was prevented from taking that ride. He was actually the, the, the leading rider in the racing league. Mm. And so and he got overtaken. By Safi Osborne. It could have cost him 20 grand straight off the, off the bat. Um, so he didn't take the rides at Newcastle on Thursday and then didn't ride at Newbury on Friday. Um, thus far, we have medical reasons. It's, I, think it's, I think we're on pretty legally safe ground to say there has been a failed test. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, why would you be stood down for medical reasons? Um, the, uh, the, the exact reasons haven't been published by the BHA. They haven't in the case of Marco Ghiani. That is, it's unsatisfactory, but it's also understandable because obviously uh, th there are legal protocols to go through. So for journalists like us who ring the BHA and say, what's happening, what can you tell us? And they say, well, at the moment, nothing. If there are charges, they will be published in the same way that BHA charges in any other respect are published. And... We just have to wait and see what happens, really. And without going into the specifics of this case, Andrew, I think all anyone needs to do is rewind and, and w go back to your comments that you made half an hour or so ago about jockeys, lifestyles, pressures, high octane, etc. Yeah, and I, I think we're speculating here, but I, I mean, I, th I think going back to that as a general point of view, that these guys, you know, they need support and um, assistance if they're not vilification particularly but um you know anyway we're speculating so we are but the uh, the testing mechanisms as introduced in 2021 by the BHA um I think are going to be more effective um uh, and that may be something that's worth bearing in mind the BHA also have an appeal to deal with or their appeals panel have a, an appeal to deal with this involves Rafe Beckett and the St Ledger again for the second time in seven years after Simple Verse was disqualified and then reinstated from uh, winning the race back in 2015, Haskoy finished second past the post and was demoted to fourth um, behind Giovalotto. Gi Giovalotto, yeah. Yeah, Giovalotto, sorry. Um, is he going to win his appeal or not? Oh, I, I think it's very close. I mean, firstly, the, the appellate procedure is such whereby the, the panel simply consider the issue afresh and they make a, a judgment. It's not like an appellate procedure, for example, in if you and I were, you know, in criminal court, not that I'm suggesting that would ever happen, but whereby we, we would maybe lodge a procedural impropriety or, or something like that. Um, I thought it was pretty close. I was actually surprised when uh, they turned, when, when they, uh, Haskell, of course, finished second, had interfered with Javalotto, finished fourth, uh, and then uh, the stewards moved Haskell back to fourth place and, and mm. promoted Javalotto to third. No, go on. And uh, I was quite, sur I, I was surprised that they did. I, I thought that uh, Frankie de Torres was done for careless, and so it was whether the interference had been the di the difference between the the distance between the two horses essentially. Um, marginally, my my feeling was that that Hasco would have stayed in front. But what do you think, Andrew? We're, we're in an era at the moment where we are talking about the professional foul an awful lot, and whether you know that uh, those results should be allowed to stand in those instances. Well, I, I think. Consistency is the most important thing with stewarding. Um, th to me, the interference to, to you know happened occurred quite a long way from the, the finishing line, um, but it looks significant. I, th I agree with Dave. I think it's a, a difficult decision, but I think marginally, I would be in favour of Haskoy staying second. Okay, and that will appeal will be he heard shortly by uh, the BHA's appeals panel. We're talking about uh, Irish Champions Weekend, um, Longines Irish Champions Weekend, which produced some amazing sport last. Uh, last Saturday and Sunday. Um, Saturday, the Irish Champion Stakes won by Luxembourg, amazing training performance by Aidan O'Brien, and any number of good performances on, on Sunday day. It really was. Um, it, it's a relatively new 
concept Irish Champions weekend, but in terms of what's happening on the track, it's a phenomenal success, isn't it? I mean, the the action on Saturday was was good enough. Luxembourg, as you say, that that really illustrating Aidan O'Brien's art as a trainer. But the Curra was even better, wasn't it? I mean, Highfield Princess, uh, Tahira were really explosive in victory um, it's an interesting point that of the 16 races that they were won by 12 different trainers so mm -hmm. you don't have the, 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 the dominance that you sometimes have in uh, those major festivals it was spread across uh, different countries too and so it, in, in terms of what goes on on the track at least yeah. I think it's been a, an amazing success again as we've now referencing for the third time the holy grail is it, it, at its inception the aim was to widen things up whether it's done that talking to people in Ireland Richie Forrester wrote an excellent piece uh, in the Racing Post again I think it, it, it's yet to reach that goal uh, Andrew you had a run at Irish Champions weekend would you like more would you would you target it more aggressively yeah I, I've really I've never been to Lepistan and I'd love to go there and that looks to me the Irish Champion is one of the great races of historically of, of, of the season um, and I'd love to go and the sadness f f from my point of view is it clashes obviously or seems to always clash with Doncaster mm. um, when we were busy and I just wish there was a way of, of separating the two so that we could all go and celebrate our Champions weekend um, but it's probably never going to happen and, and we talk about uh, cooperation between UK courses. Do you think we need... I remember when Irish Champions Weekend was formulated and Labrooks was sponsoring the St Ledger and they were livid that the two things were happening uh, on the uh, same weekend. There was a time as well, I think it was maybe staged a little later in the afternoon mm -hmm. and of Ryan or Frankie helicoptering yeah, over. Yeah, that's right. To, and I quite like all, the, the, you, you know, the racing, that's good TV, isn't it? That, that sort of thing that the, they could do two, two meetings of these major, you know, major meetings. But... Um, yeah, I think coordination not just between British race courses, but British and Irish race courses probably makes sense. Now, talking of coordination between British race courses, York in 2023 are having a fixture on Air Gold Cup Day. Well, they're not very close together geographically if you look at a map of the whole of the British Isles, but in terms of where race courses are distributed, you'd imagine that Air is taking an awful lot of its participants from Yorkshire and that surrounding area. Um, Andrew, Air aren't happy, Catterick aren't happy. York say they've gone through the, the processes. It's a self-funded fixture. They're not taking anything from the levy. They won't try and compete with Ayers races. Where do you stand on this? Uh, to me, I think if whatever York want to do, they can do. They are the, the shining beacon in terms of, of race courses providing five-star treatment from, from our stable staff to owners to prize money to race goers. I mean, they are... The, 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 you know the, the example to everyone so I will always side with York from that point of view I do feel sorry for Air because the Air Gold Cup is and should be mm. a, a major event um, and you've you've won it and you know how much it meant to your Scottish owner when you when yeah, you won it as well yeah. I mean it's it's a it's a fabulous race and it's it, you, but you'd, you'd hope they're not going to be running a six furlong 0 110 handicap at York so it might take a few jockeys away but then that might give opportunities to jockeys to win an Air Gold Cup, they might not have got the ride in the first place. So th there are pros and cons, but as I say, I think if, if every race course could follow York's example, um, racing would be in a great place. And if every race course could self-fund its fixtures on a Saturday day, then racing would probably be all right as well. Yeah, in, the, in this sense, the, you know, the devil really is in the detail, isn't it, as to, as to what the programme will be. Um, Reaction from Air, David Brown said disappointment. James Sanderson at Catterick Bridge said very disappointed. Um, I completely agree that York is a brilliantly run race course. Um, I, I love going there. I think they do so much right. I, I do think this represents a PR own goal. I have to say that. But we'll just have to see what, uh, what races are on for the class. But certainly... Catterick 43 miles away, air obviously on the west coast of Scotland, but look at the trainers who go there, Richard Fahey, David O'Mara, Michael Dodds, all, mm. all, all very much part of the, the York scene. Uh, of the York scene, yeah. Yeah, and the other point is that it's, it's taking York's fixtures back up to 18, which is where they were, and then they had to come off the Northumberland Plate Day because of the five meetings a day rules. So they got bumped off that, so they tried to bump themselves back on to another day, neither of which is geographically ideal, I suppose. This, all, this all dates back to what, in my mind, is the single worst 
day in modern horse racing history, and that is the 2003. For it wasn't a day, was it? It ran, it ran over the. It spanned yeah. two years, but the uh, the, the then BH, BHB's inability through the courts to control the fixture, the fixture yeah. list, and I think it's caused uh, it, it's caused a lot of damage ever since then. Chairman of the BHA is uh, is waiting outside. Joe Samara Smith. He'll be in very shortly indeed. Um, Willie Mullins and Jigginstown are back together. This is significant for more than just the, the reason of Jigginstown sending the odd horse back to Willie Mullins. Dave, there's the whole layers that you can peel back here. Oh, aren't there just? Um, 2016. It was about this time, wasn't it? The end of September when uh, the news broke that the the lorries had arrived at Jigginstown. Uh, sorry, from Jigginstown uh, at um, in County Carlow to take the horses away. Um, it's. It was said this week that w we never fell out. You know that relations have always been cordial. Uh, I remember one time when. Willie Mullins won the Ryanair chase. I can't remember which horse it was with, but it did seem that there was a little bit of frost uh, in relations that day. But as um, Michael O'Leary's brother, Eddie, said, it's a long road that doesn't turn. And so uh, they're now back in the fold. One aspect of this that I wonder whether still might turn is the disappearance gradually from jump racing. Uh, of Jigginstown and those colours, we were told. Well, we said we were paring down, and we mm. are. But um, this seems to. I, I'll believe it when bit I see a, it. Bit of a U turn, way. yeah. Um, Andrew, have you ever had uh, owners that have left and come back? Uh, yes, yeah, and and I think as Dave said, as you know, not burning bridges and being cordial. People have the, the right to move horses around. Um, you know, at the end of the day, they're paying the bills, and you know it's entirely their decision but I, I think um, yeah, we've on a number of occasions had people that would, would not have horses for two or three years and then might send you another one in the past I and mean, you, you know later but nothing to that scale obviously um, there's quite a lot of horses that left in one go but you haven't had a big bust up with anyone who's then come come back not to my recollection anyway I, I, but I was going to say tell between legs but the idea of Michael's the earlier his tail ever be <laughs> being between his legs is a complete anathema, I suspect, and indeed Willie Mullins. So there you go. Um, those were this week's talking points.